Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. So, I am so grossed out right now. I can't even, oh my goodness. Everybody's had a mouse or two. There's people I know that have many mice. They deal with it. Me, I can't even look at the things. If they're in a cage, that's a little bit different. But, oh my goodness. Anyways, as you guys know, my house has an apartment upstairs above the main floor. And my son Brian was always living there. Well, now there's really nobody upstairs. And I start hearing noises for the last couple of weeks. It reminded me of when his cat was upstairs and I would hear the cat, you know, running all over the house. And anyways, I, I didn't really think much of it. And then one day I'm sitting here and I hear a loud bang. It sounded like something about the size of a cat had jumped down from a countertop or something and landed on the floor. Okay, so that started to really freak me out. So I got a hold of my son-in-law and I said, can you go upstairs and check and see if there's a cat up there? So he goes up and he calls me a little while later. He said, nope. There's no sign of a cat or anything up there. It looks, you know, fine. I said, okay. So about an hour later, I hear a brrrr and footsteps, like heavy footsteps running. I'm like, what the heck? So I called him back and I said, there's something up there. Can you go and check it again? So sure enough, he said, yeah, there's something. I guess like half the upstairs is the attic and the other half is the apartment. So something is in the attic and there's a hole and it's quite quite a big size hole that is goes through to the apartment in one of the closets. So there's something up there that's quite big and it's not like uh it's it's big like a raccoon or something. It's not like a mouse or a rat or anything. Oh my god, thank god. If it oh my word, I would move out. I would literally go to a hotel. If there was a rat up there, I, mm, nope, bye, <laughs> not me. It was different when my husband was here because he would take care of, you know, stuff like that. But, oh my God, I'll arm myself with 25 cats if I have to. Okay, so that was it. I'm going to call an exterminator and I don't even have a clue how they get rid of, you know, raccoons or possums or whatever. God forbid, what? What? I hope they don't kill them. Oh, that would be not uh, not nice at all. No, I definitely think I would send them home and try to figure out another way. Anyways, guys, before I get started, there's something that's driving me insane. Um, my office is right above, I think, where the, the uh, air conditioner and the furnace is because whenever it goes on, you can hear the humming is what I'm getting at. You can hear the humming. And so in between each, you know, word or, you know, when I go to take a breath, there's that, you know, space of time that you can hear the humming. And so I have to go back and I have to go through every time I'm not speaking, I've got to erase that humming sound. That is going to take me forever. So I'm wondering if you guys could just possibly turn a blind eye to that if it's not going to drive you nuts. That would mean a lot to me and then I'll uh, work on trying to figure something else out even if I have to kind of move to a different room or turn the darn thing off. How stupid. <laughs> Simple solution, eh? Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm just going to turn it off. And there's one more thing I want to address before I start. Um, our subscriber count has gone through the roof. Thank you. I'm so happy for that. Except now there's a bunch of people that are unhappy uh, to have to listen to this jibber jabber at the beginning of each video. So I, I just want to mention that I do this because I really like having the connection with you guys. And I like you to know what my day-to-day -day life is like. And then 
in the comment section. You guys tell me what yours is like. I really enjoy the banter. So if you don't like it, just fast forward it. Like just, you know, click till you find where the story starts. It's easy peasy. Everybody's happy. Okay, this one is titled The Beginning. Uh, hello, Leslie and crew. This has been a long time coming, I know, but every time I start, I would feel like my grammar needed serious help. Anyways, my daughter is going to help by going over it for me, LOL, before I send it. Can you imagine I'm 45 years old? LOL. I'm a boxer, not a scholar. I'm trying to make light of this story, but it really wasn't cute at all. Okay, James and I were the best of friends since birth. Literally. Our mothers met at the bank, or something like that, and then just happened to give birth the same day to James and I. And they got put in the same exact room. Back then, moms could stay in the hospitals up to three days and just rest if they needed to. So during those three days, our moms became very close. It also turned out that we lived on the same road about two blocks apart. We lived near Tallahassee in a fairly new subdivision. Our road was the first one that they built on, or so I've heard, and our road backed up to a natural stream that was just on the other side of the property fence. Back in those days, the builders were obligated to put fencing up to prevent the homeowners from pinching land that belonged to the state. The owners could put in a gate, and most did to take advantage of the large stream and beautiful forests on the other side of the stream. So, needless to say, when James and I were about seven, I believe, we were allowed to venture out of the backyards and start playing in that creek. We wandered around those woods day in and day out. Of course, back then, parents allowed their children to roam free and play. Whereas now, kids are like little pansies. One day, I remember that James came to my house to play he said he had made a new friend, and James said he was real fun, but he couldn't talk. So we went down to the creek towards James's house, and James hollered out for his new friend. We waited a while, and James pointed down a ways, and there was a kid about our size peeking out from behind a willow tree. James told me to wait here, and he went across the creek. Finally, James waved to me. Right away, I knew there was something wrong with this kid. He grunted and squealed, but no words. He had a lot of hair on his body, but mostly I remember the smell and the filthiness. The kid wowed us with his ability to manipulate rocks. He could skip rocks straight down the length of the creek as far as we could see, while we could only skip across the creek. Then this kid started nailing birds and squirrels right out of the trees and if they weren't dead when they fell, he would go over and stomp on them. Well, that was it for me. I made an excuse and I went home. I want to mention one more thing I noticed in this kid. He had something wrong with his mouth and his breathing sounded strained. Now that I'm older, I am absolutely positive that he had a cleft lip, which people used to call a hair lip. I believe that this is what made him sound like he had a stuffed nose, and when he made any sounds at all, they were very nasally. James seemed to prefer playing with Harry than he did with me, so I went out and I made new friends and held a grudge against Harry for stealing my friend. James called him Harry because he was covered in hair. When we were about 11, James came down to my place and asked to hang out. I said, sure, but no Harry. James and I were still friends, but I just stopped going down there. James started telling me that he didn't really want to play with Harry anymore because he was getting worse and worse. He said that he would go for very long periods without seeing Harry and was basically staying to himself mostly. He said that something happened and now he was really afraid. He said that... He would see Harry's mom and dad from a long distance away, peeking at them while they played, and that they didn't seem to be able to talk either. 
When other kids or people walking their dogs came near Harry, he always ran and hid until they were gone. Sometimes his parents would do odd bird sounds to remind Harry to hide. James said that Harry could mimic all the animal sounds too. One day, about a month earlier, they were playing in the woods and Harry jumped on James and winded him. James said he got mad and he ran at Harry and hit him in the chest and Harry fell over backwards, even though Harry was a foot taller than James now. James said he literally felt the ground shake and all of a sudden he was grabbed by his arm and swung off his feet and he hit the tree hard. He said he was hurt and he ran home crying. He didn't see what had done it, but he thinks it was Harry's dad or mom. James's mom took him to the doctor's because his wrist was so swollen, but luckily it was just a sprain. James lied to his mom and told her that he had tripped and fallen and fell on his arm. James also told me that one day he was playing in the stream after days of bad rain and the stream was really deep. He had gone across looking for Harry and he wasn't there. So when he went to go back home, he slipped off a wet rock and fell heavily into the deep raging water. He was going down quickly and he couldn't get his feet. Harry was running down the side of the stream and he jumped in and he grabbed James and helped him to his feet. When it was time for him to cross over again, Harry held his hand and went across with him. James said Harry was way stronger than he was and that Harry was a lot taller now. He said that now when he plays outside, he can sense that Harry is nearby watching him, and he's afraid to play with him now. I told him that I actually thought he might be watching me too, but I never saw him. James's family moved to a new neighborhood a couple of years later. If he had any other encounters with Harry, he never said anything. Fast forward to 10 years or so, I was in college and I came home every weekend. Well, this one particular weekend, I knew my parents were going to be away at my aunt and uncle's from Miami. and They'd be gone a few days. So I brought my girlfriend with me for the weekend. It was about 1 a.m. and we were laying in bed watching movies. I went into the kitchen to grab something to eat for us and I heard Emily gasp. I asked if she was okay, and in an alarmingly sing-songy voice, she says, Oh, yeah. Then, a few seconds later, she came into the kitchen, covered up with one of my blankets off my bed. I made some sexy joke, and she had a look of fear on her face. She said, Nick, there is someone with a mask on looking in your window. So I said, Okay. Okay, you stay here and I'll go see if I can see anything. We had all the lights off, so I should have been able to see whoever it was looking in. I laid down and I picked up the clicker and I casually started rubbing my eyes, looking towards the window. But I couldn't see what Emily was seeing. All of a sudden there was a blood-curdling scream coming from Emily in the other room. I ran towards her and she ran towards me. She was crying to call the police and she wanted to go home. Finally, I settled her down long enough and I did call the police and they were there within 10 minutes. It took a bit of coaxing on their part. Finally, she said there was a man in a mask looking in the bedroom window. And she said she was in the blanket waiting in the kitchen for me when I went to investigate the peeping Tom in the bedroom. She wandered into the dining room to be closer to the bedroom and she heard something. She thought and she glanced over her shoulder and there was a monster looking in the sliding glass door at her. She said it had to be a suit because it was completely covered in hair and it took up the whole side of the sliding glass door. Then the cops said, like a Bigfoot or a skunk cape? I can't remember what he actually said now. I knew right away that that's what it was. It had to be grown up Harry. And all of a sudden I realized that Harry was a child Bigfoot. 
I hadn't even considered or thought about him in all these past years. I took the officer who had mentioned the Bigfoot aside while the other cop talked to Emily, who seemed to be a doubter. I told the cop everything I knew about Harry and and even mentioned what James went through with Harry. He said I wasn't the first one to mention this stuff and he believed me. They took a look around the house and they said that there was some wet spots where something had previously stood on the back porch. They recommended that we close all the drapes and turn on all the outside lights. The next day I got up early and I went to take a look around myself and the cops failed to mention that the Bigfoot bent my fence and must have slipped on the grass because it was all bunched up and there was mud where the grass used to be. I drove Emily back to her mom's place and we stayed there for the night. Emily and I are married now and we have two sweet teenage girls who love to research Bigfoot with their old man. We have a cabin that we love to spend time at and there is definitely action. One of our neighbors who researches as well and he swears he was chased by a dog man. I mentioned that he should be watching your channel as well and maybe send his encounter in. This guy is as trustworthy as they come. It took him years to open up to us, and he has experienced a lot of stuff in his 60-odd years. Anyway, I'm going to stop here because I have to start dinner for my crew, I will definitely send you the encounters we've had at the cabin. In my opinion, they are far more exciting and informative. All my best. Nick, the Greek god. LOL, just kidding. Well, guys, I don't know about you, but I can't wait to hear what else he's got to say. Um, I've received a few stories about these baby Bigfoot. And they're pretty interesting for sure. Uh, Definitely want to know more about that. There doesn't seem to be a lot of information out there. People don't often have uh, relationships with these baby Bigfoots because the parents are super um, protective, I think is a good way to describe that. Okay, guys, I think that's going to be it for this episode. You know I love you. Please remember to be kind, to be thoughtful, and to love each other. And don't forget, love yourself. All right, guys, you take it easy. Send in those stories and encounters. Okay, bye for now.